actually, I've just seen that Mr. Stephen Young and uh, Mr. Rasconi have just joined. So if you permit uh, the uh, other uh, slurry people and these two, they can join and then uh, people can ask questions from Mr. Manish Agarwal so that we finish these three, we complete this session. So over to you, Mr. Uh, Stephen Young. I beg your apologies that I want to introduce you properly. <laughs> You're, we were trying to announce your name. Uh, okay. Mr. Mr. Julian is also here. Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, Julian. Okay, so I'll introduce uh, Mr. Julian Rasconi. He's he's uh, working for a company called Patterson and Cook Consulting Engineers. He's a registered professional engineer, a BSc in mechanical engineering, and a master's degree in business leadership, which is a fantastic. Uh, combination. He earlier worked for a very famous company called Dow Chemical, has had key positions in various companies, and now he is the operations manager for Patterson and Cook Africa. Again, uh, I'm I'm mentioning the country Morocco because in the four years he worked for a very big pipeline project, the largest slurry pipeline system in the world. And he's currently leading the design process and operations of systems in Brazil and Morocco. He regularly lectures in Chile and Moscow. The other one is Mr. Stephen Young. He is the business de development manager. Uh, he holds an MBA, BSc and MSc in geology. Very good. Over 35 years of experience manufacturing, long distance slurry pipelines, tailings management and all that. In 2016, Stephen joined this company, Patterson and Cook. So over to both of you. One of you will be presenting, Stephen? Yes. Yes. Okay, Julian. Stephen. Okay. Okay. Over to you. I'll present and can I go ahead and share my screen? No. I'm asking those. Rishabh, can you share uh, Julian's screen? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mr. Julian, you can go ahead and share your screen, please. You have the. Are exercise. you seeing? Are you seeing that come up? Yep. Yep. Thank you, sir. All right. Yeah. Put it on, Firstly, put it on on uh, presentation. Full screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Firstly, please accept my apologies. Um, it's just been one of those days. I actually got up three hours ago because I thought that was the correct time, considering the time zones. I'm actually in. Uh, Cape Town in South Africa and um, Stephen is in Denver in the USA and we worked out our times but clearly we didn't get it right so I'm very sorry about the delay and thank you for being patient enough to to have us in the presentation. Um, what we what we want to do and it's it's very short we actually want to take a step back and look at slurry pipelines in general um, Patterson engine and, and, and not just necessarily just um, long distance slurry pipelines, but perhaps make the, the audience a little more aware of all the areas where slurry pipelines are used in the mining industry. Um, because I find when I give this presentation, some people say, oh, they didn't know that the, um, you know, slurry pipelines were used for say, uh, re-mining operations. Um, they only knew that they were used for, say, tailings or long distance pipelines, whatever they are familiar with. So I'm going to talk about some tailings pipelines in general. Um, this picture, for example, is a um, platinum tailings um, slurry pipeline that we designed in, in, in South Africa. And um, yeah, so um, without further ado, let me take you through a couple of, a couple of the, the places they used for. And again, this is... I'm, I'm Julian and I've got Steve um, listening in as well from, from Denver. So we're going to talk about slurry pipelines in mineral, m mining and, and mineral processing. We quickly go look at a, a mining flow sheet and identify where there could be slurry pipelines in the, in the mining process. We're going to um, go over some of the bulk commodity transport options. And then just touch, because I mean, we have very little time, just touch briefly on some of the practical constraints for coarse and fine uh, particle transport, because I think it is obviously, as you most of you are aware, um, 
the slurry pipeline is kind of optimized for um, finer material and there might be some pre preparation required to get it right. So for example, we might get a call from someone saying, oh, we want to transport, um, you know, 40 millimeter globules of coal, for example. Now, anything is possible, but in order to get that application right, you need to design the pipeline differently and it might be more expensive. So um, it's best for us to get involved with our clients early on so that the process can be optimized to include a transport um, slurry pipeline and not just come in at the end when we say, well, the way it's being prepared maybe isn't optimized for, for pipelines. So um, if we have a look at this, um, can you see my cursor, Hello. by the way? Uh, Mr. Julian, can I bother you for just a minute? I'm Deepak of again. Course. I uh, I'm told that uh, our chief guest and uh, speaker from the government of India, uh, Madam Rasika Chaube, is actually waiting that nobody is allowing her to join. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a little complicated situation. I hope Julian uh, would not mind. We will have you just after I introduce Madam uh, Rasika Chaudhary, is that all? And then, of course, we'll continue. Julian, my of sincere course. apologies. I know you are around midnight in Denver and South Africa. I don't know. So is it all right? Yes, of course, no problem. No problem. Yeah. No problem. All right, so, so um, getting back to the areas where slurry pipelines are used, just to, just to take a step back and take a broad picture and not necessarily just focus on maybe long distance pipelines. And, and these are pipelines in which we, um, Patterson and Cook, uh, you know, around the world, we're involved in all these processes. So um, I've just numbered the main ones here. And so the first one is my mining area pipelines. So some of you might not be aware that slurry pipelines can be used for certain mined products to actually um, pump the, um, the mined material to the process plant. Obviously this can't be used for everything. It certainly can't be used to transfer, you know, hard rock uh, materials, um, but it is very successfully used, for example, with softer materials like phosphate, um, in, in remining operations, which are very big in South Africa, where we've been involved with remining um, pretty much all of the original um, tailings um, stacks for the gold industry. And we are constantly involved with the heavy minerals industry, um, where we also design and install pipelines for transferring the, the ore material, the, the, the um, mined material to the process plant. So that's the first one, number one. Um, obviously, another one which is I kind of term our bread and butter because we, we are busy um, working with this around the world all the time, which is fine tailings um, pumping um, to um, dispose of in tailing dams. And a growing area of our business now is actually um, taking the tailings and pumping it underground. If you have, a, if you have an underground mining system, it is possible um, to use your tailings, um, prepare it in the right way, add some cement and pump it underground um, because there are a lot of concerns now about surface disposal. So that's another, another thing we're involved with is, is backfilling and um, underground mining um, filling. Okay, uh, we also use um, pipelines for disposing of coarse waste material. Um, so more sort of a sandy material. And often these materials are actually used for constructing various things. So your coarse material is often used to, to construct the wall used to contain your fine material. And I'll give you an example of that in the presentation. And then we pump material for rehabilitation. I'll show you a slide now where we had to reconstitute fine and coarse tailings from the process plant, um, pump it to the, uh, um, the mined area in a specific ratio so that when we, we could then regrow um, vegetation and then return the mined area back to um, the community once the mining had been complete. And so that kind of activity is, is gaining in importance as well. And then of course, there's long distance pipelines um, to transport the ore. And we're heavily involved in that. Um, um, Julie and Raj were talking about the work in, in um, OCP. Um, so we did the detail design and, and commissioning of that um, um, Karib go to your um, pipeline system. And we're currently involved with several expansion projects in Morocco and, <coughs> and actually designing that, um, that desalination water pipeline, which um, 
uh, which Julie mentioned as well. So if we go to number one, so just uh, this is now again number one, which is taking the um, the ore from the mined area. So here's an example of a um, a, a, a remining area for um, the gold mines. So around South Africa and particularly around the Johannesburg area, historically there have been enormous um, um, mine dumps, um, which have kind of been part of the city's life, you know, kind of dominated the skyline. Uh, well, if you go to Johannesburg now, you will see virtually none of those um, those um, tailing stumps anymore. And and we've been involved with remining them. So um, we use high pressure um, water, and we call these monitor guns. And so we remine the um, the tailing stack, and um, and then manage it and pump it back to a process plant. And so what this enables mines to do is firstly to get, get rid of the mine dumps, but also um, to then extract the final bit of gold that couldn't be extracted in the original mining process. So um, it's, it's actually a viable process and it, it's sort of economically viable and these mining operations make money as well as tidying up the, the environment. Then fine waste disposal. So um, um, you, you talk here about very viscous material. Um, here's a photograph I took at a heavy minerals mining operation where you can see this sort of laminar flow caused by these very fine um, particles. So that's another area we're involved in. And um, if you go back here to coarse waste disposal, so in this picture over here, or this one here, what we, in fact, sorry, this one here, what we're doing is we've separated the fine and coarse material in the mining process. Now we're using the coarse material to make the wall around the tailings dam, and then we're pumping the fine tailings into the dam itself. So this becomes um, a more cost-effective process. Rehabilitation. Um, here we've built a, a, a pilot plant to remix the coarse and the fine tailings, which is then mixed in a specific ratio, pumped onto the mine, and then uh, it becomes fertile and uh, it's possible for the mine to then revegetate and return the mine um, you know, back to the community. And then of course, long distance pipelines, which um, um, Borsenko have already spoken about. So here we're talking about transporting um, or um, from the um, from the mining area or the process plant um, down to the area where it's either shipped or it could be um, processed further. Uh, in the case of Morocco, a lot of the phosphate ore is then converted into phosphoric acid. Um, but of course, um, you know, uh, um, as we see in the subject of this conference, it can also be um, converted into pellets or briquettes for um, for further shipment. Very quickly. I'm just going to bring these all up. Um, what are the basic um, transport options? Short haul, generally less than 20 kilometers. Often um, trucking is used. Um, long haul trucking may be used up to 75 kilometers. Um, the, the running costs are very high um, and, um, and the costs just keep rising as you transport um, greater amounts. Overland conveyor. Uh, a single flight could be up to 50 kilometers or more. Um, you've got to control the dust. There are limitations with grades. It obviously is above ground, so you can't use the, the, the area around the conveyor, whereas a pipeline can be underground. Or trains. Um, in South Africa, for example, we've got an 800 kilometer um, train line between Sishan and Saldana for exporting iron ore. Um, it's very expensive when you're talking about a greenfield project where you can select either a pipeline or a rail line. The pipeline is vastly less expensive than the, than the, the rail line. And then slurry pipelines, as I mentioned, you do have to um, prepare the slurry, I mean, the, 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 the solids correctly. Um, the grade needs to be relatively fine, um, but it's viable over long distances. Once it's constructed, the pipeline is underground, out of the way. Um, the, the land can be used for whatever. In the case of Morocco, it's, it's farmland that can then be reused. And um, there are just some limitations in, the, in the, the preparation and the kind of material that can be transported. So um, quickly, there's a vast array of materials that can be transported. And um, some people might not know how big you can actually transport um, particles. You can actually, you can actually transport um, small rocks. 
a big part of our business and, and really how it started is in the, the diamond mining industry uh, around South Africa. And we're still actively involved with, with Anglo and De Beers in, um, in deep sea mining. And we, we provide systems which can actually suck up to 300 millimeter um, rocks to the surface. Um, and this is done in 800 millimeter pipelines at about seven meters per second. And um, surprisingly, if it's a vertical system, the solids migrate to the center and you can in that way control the, the wear rate. So in fact, it's easier doing it vertically than it would be in a, in a horizontal pipeline. So we can pump very, very coarse material. Obviously there are limitations uh, and in horizontal pipelines, the wear rates are extremely high. And we spend a lot of time designing various components um, for, for De Beers to, to enable them to, to deal with these high wear rates. On the other extreme, um, um, very fine particles. So velocities can be much lower. Um, um, and this reduces wear rate and, and power consumption. However, if it's too fine, clearly you can see from these pictures, it becomes too viscous and then the power um, requirements increase drastically. So what we generally settle on is a, is a, a, a sort of combination of slightly corner, coarser and more fine materials um, so that your sort of 30% fines keeps your coarser particles in suspension and then you get a good trade-off between um, power consumption and, and, and your ability to transport. And that's typically how, how um, long distance pipelines are made successful, that combination of fine and um, coarse material. So just to summarize, um, slurry systems are designed for abrasive and, and, and harsh operating conditions. And there's an optimum combination of, of particle size and concentration. If you have the very particles, the kind of particles which we transport for the diamond mining industry, they've got to be transported very fast and there's a very high wear and the power consumption is very high. If you go down to the fine material side, you tend to get very high um, cities. And at some point, even though you can transport these more slowly without them settling, um, if the fine materials dominate, the viscosity comes way too high. So it's a matter of finding the, um, the trade-off between fine and coarse and getting this particle um, distribution correct. So um, that's it. It was just a summary of, of the different areas in which um, tailings pipelines are used in the mining industry. And then I just touched on, on uh, the impact of the properties of the solids on, on the performance of the pipeline. Um, in the remainder of the presentation, there are slides on Patterson and Cook giving you some, some um, um, scope as to um, the areas that we cover, but I'm not going to go through that now because I know the time is limited, but we'll send you the presentation um, and then you'll be able to see those slides. Thank you very much. That, as you rightly, once we get your full presentation, we will put it both on our website as well on the link which we are preparing for this seminar. But uh, okay. because we had three excellent speakers on slurry, uh, of course, I could see a lot of questions are there, but in case we start taking questions, we'll run overboard. But if there is a quick question on slurry, particularly on India, you, there, are, there have been three speakers on slurry before, because they are, they are burning the midnight oil it's past 12 in America. So if there are any quick questions, you can, otherwise I promise you, if you send an email later on, I will pass on your email to Julian and to Julie and all those. But if there's a quick question, please go ahead, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. You can just raise your hand or raise hand or just come in, just unmute yourself. Right? No, you can go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so not, uh, no, there are no questions. What we'll do is that, uh, Raj, I don't think there are any more questions, but I promise that if, if uh, your friends and all, they raise questions, I don't want to make you further away. Of course, you are free to go to continue, but if you are really sleepy or something like that, you and, and Julie and all, so you continue because we will we, have the pleasure of your this thing because sure. we have some outstanding speakers from India now. 
for example, the person next to you is a, is a one of the top people from our uh, pellets industry is a consultant, Mr. Saralia. His name is Mr. D. L. Saralia. So I would uh, really welcome if our friends from America, they continue to be with us and uh, we will be very, very delighted in fact, and we will be very grateful that I know uh, United States is one country, my daughter is in Denver also, that they don't like to talk after office hours about business. But uh, Indians are different and I am sure you will agree. So we'll be